Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get started with color grading log footage in DaVinci Resolve and with a few basic adjustments we can take our footage from this to this. Before we get started I'd highly recommend going to the link at the top of the description to download the notes I'm going to be using for this guide as well as a couple of basic LUTs that will help give your footage a different look and show you what you can do within DaVinci Resolve. Before we jump into DaVinci, if you're from Instagram I'm going to show you how to download the LUTs, the note tree and the raw video and then install them into DaVinci. If you're from YouTube you can follow along if you want but the real tutorial will start at this timestamp. So, on Gumroad, you should be able to see this page. If you can't find this page or if you've already clicked off it, it'll be in your emails as well. But what we want to do, so we want to download the resources. So we're going to click download and this is going to download a zip file with all of these things here. Alrighty, and once that's downloaded, you're going to come over to your file explorer. I'm on Mac, so I'm going to come to my downloads and come to resources. We're going to do the LUTs first. So we shall open up DaVinci now. We're going to create a new project. I'm just going to name it Tutorial. Apparently not Tutorial 2. <laughs> to install the LUTs, you come over to the Color tab. Up here, you come to the LUT tab. There should be a My LUTs folder. If not, we can right click on LUTs, do Reveal in Finder, and then you can just make a folder here called LUTs or something like that. So we'll use this one as a demonstration. So we've got that there. And with both of these finders open, we're gonna copy these two into our LUTs folder. And then we'll have to refresh this. And there we go, it's popped up. So here's our two LUTs. And then we'll do the node tree next. I'm going to use, use the um, DPX file. I'm not sure what the DRX one is or what the difference is. What we wanna do is come to the gallery tab come down to power grades and then right click import and then you'll look for the node tree node tree dpx and there we go it comes up here and you might be wondering what a power grade is it's essentially like saving a lot except you save all the node tree and everything else so you can go through and change it because every clip's different and it's obviously not going to match up perfectly but anyway with that done we'll come back to our edit tab and I'm going to change our timeline settings so if you click shift 9 it'll bring that up because I usually post to Instagram I'm going to do 1920 by 1080 the clips I'm using are 30 fps or they're usually 30 or 60 so I want these to be 30 hit save and then we will grab our clips and drag them into our media pool. We don't want this to change and we can begin. So to start, we're going to drag our first clip onto the timeline. I'm not gonna worry about adding any stabilization to this or since we're just focused on color today. So we'll jump over to our color tab and then we wanna come back to our gallery, power grade, and then you wanna double click on the one that we created and like that, it has put our node tree into the node space. You'll notice that nothing has changed. So the first thing we need to do is come to the CST node and then open up the effects tab. If you can't see the node tree, come up here and make sure you select this, which will turn the node space on and off. So with CST selected, our input color space, if you're following along, because this is F-Log footage, I found that Rec 2020 works well. Our gamma will be F-Log. Here that is and then I like to make the output color space DaVinci wide gamut there that is and output gamma is DaVinci intermediate and essentially what the wide gamut does is it gives you a lot of control over all the light information that's come from the camera and so it essentially allows you to push and pull things a lot more without breaking them up and then once that's done if you're on Sony Canon it'll be whatever input gamma you shot on so it could be s log one two or three i'm not sure what can's called it could be c log uh, if you're on panasonic v log and so on and we're going to skip forward and come to output and we want to match up the input color space and gamma to the one that we had in the output which was these two so it's essentially these two are inputting into the next node so this is davinci wide gamut and DaVinci Intermediate, there we go. And now you can see that it's made 
a big difference because it's converted it from log to our color space, which is going to be rec 709. And our output gamma will be gamma 2.4. And these two are essentially the standard among online media and I think most film and TV productions. Okay, so now that's done, we can start with our exposure tab. For exposure, I mainly use the primary color wheels. If you're wondering where they are, it's this one here. And so I know what I'm changing. I like to change this from vector scope to waveform. If you're wondering where that is, it is this one here called scopes. And what I will do is I will drag, so lift is what controls our shadows. So I'm gonna drag it to the left and pull them down until they're just above zero, which is where they start clipping. And I'm gonna use our gain wheel, which controls our highlights and part of the midtones, and drag that upwards to about 896 usually looks good. Looks especially good for this clip. And we can see what a huge difference that has made. It's added a lot of contrast a lot more color it's cleared up that cloudiness that comes from log footage and i'm pretty happy with that for now so i'm going to leave that be we're going to come to our balance node next for the balance node i mainly use the offset wheel which is once again is in the primary color wheels and what this one's for so if you have any colors that you don't really want in the image but if you had too much blue you'd shift it towards orange like too much pink you'd shift towards green and you're essentially using it to just balance your image and make it as neutral as possible but because straight out of the camera it looks pretty decent so we won't need to change anything. It's also a good way of adding a look but we can also use that in the look node later on which is where we'll be adding a lot. So the next one's contrast. There's a lot of ways you can add contrast in DaVinci. One of them's the curve tool just like in Lightroom. Create an S curve adds a whole bunch of contrast but we're going to be sticking to the primary color wheels. Just using the contrast slider we're going to pull it to the right just a little bit and then using our pivot slider, we can choose where that contrast is affecting. I think around about there looks pretty good. You can see it just makes it look a little bit more punchy. Very slight difference, but with color grading, it's the small things that matter. And then next, the saturation node. Once again, lots of ways to add saturation in DaVinci, but for the sake of this tutorial, just being a starter guide, we're going to use just the saturation slider. So if we drag that to the right, we can immediately see the car becomes a lot bluer. We just want to be careful with how much we add though, because if this was a paid shoot for a client that had a really expensive car, you wouldn't want to change the color of the paint that they spent thousands of dollars on. Same thing if you're shooting portraits, you don't really want to change someone's skin color. So just a little bit of saturation is good. Just like contrast, helps make it a bit more punchy. And then by doing Command D on Mac, I'm not sure what it is on Windows, but we can see a complete before and after and then if we can select these we can see what we have just done so a huge difference already and the next node is temperature which is pretty self-explanatory this was an overcast day so I might make it a little bit cooler maybe something like that negative 120 Looks pretty good, it's coming together. And then you might be wondering what these three parallel nodes are. They're just there for any effects you might wanna add. I won't go too deep into this today, but ones that I usually like to add are glow. On a nicer day, even on an overcast day, you can add some glow to the sky and it helps to add to that contrasty look, really making it look punchy and more interesting because this just monotone gray sky isn't very interesting. Another thing I like to do is if you come over here, scroll down, click on this gradient tool, turn it around, and then position it somewhere like this. You don't really want it to be intersecting your subject, but something like that will do. Then come back to your primary color wheels, come to offset. If you drag it this way, it has the exact same effect as a linear gradient in Lightroom. So it'll just darken your foreground and it draws your eye up to the subject. So yeah, these nodes are just for any, any effects you wanna add. If you wanna add more, it's Command P, but we're not worrying about that today. So we shall reset those. And then they will all merge into this, which then comes onto our look node, which is where we will apply the LUTs. So for this one, we will come to our LUT finder, our LUT gallery, come to that folder you made, 
I'm not sure what you named it, but here it is, Lutz. And then I made a cool and a warm one. This is obviously a dark, moody environment, so we're gonna go with the cool one and double click that to apply it. And it's added a whole bunch of contrast, darkened the image, and it's made it a super moody shot. But for your shot, it may not suit it as well. If you come to this tab, the key one, come to key output, you can slide the gain left and right, which essentially it controls how much of the LUT is visible. It's like an opacity slider. So I might just bring it back just a tad. And we can have a look at the before and the after of putting the LUT on. Pretty huge difference. It's just a big balancing act of going back and forth, changing things, seeing what you like. As color grading is, it's very subjective to what you like. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So we've gone from this to this, which is incredible. And then if we take out the, um, the log conversion. So yeah, so there's the conversion to the DaVinci wide gamut. And that's what we were able to turn it into. Huge difference. I might also quickly show you how I clean up and stabilize it. So for my gimbal shot, I wait until it starts rotating. Might stop it there. And then in your video tab, which is under the inspector tool, come down to stabilization. I'm gonna use similarity for this one. Mess around with the sliders and click stabilize. You can see there's a whole bunch of warping, so we're gonna reset. Try something else. Still a bunch of warping. Try again. It's a lot of back and forth. <laughs> can try the translation one, which is generally better. Yeah, that looks much better. So yeah, that's how I'd make one clip as part of a video. And there's also more advanced stabilization things you can do in the fusion tab, but I'm not gonna go into that rabbit hole today. <laughs> so next, we can do this other clip that I have, this R34. Once again, come to your power grades, your node tree, and double click. We will pop in our color space. Once you've done that again, back to our exposure, waveform. Bring down our shadows, bring up our highlights, maybe around, around here, something like that. Once you've found something you like, onto the contrast tab, maybe about that much, with that much pivot. Before and after, you can really see it's darkening up the areas in the background that have a lot of shadows. We're gonna add a lot more saturation on this one because this car's color is amazing in person and so you really need to add quite a bit for it to stand out in video because the lighting wasn't perfect here. I'm gonna come back to my balance tab and just bring out some of the reds that I added to make it a bit more neutral. And there we are, so looking pretty good so far. Temperature slider, maybe a little bit more warm. I love doing this, I love doing turning them all off and on. It's amazing the difference that <laughs> you can get from log footage. All right, once we've messed around with temperature, come to our look. So look, come to our LUT gallery. And for this one, yeah, the cool one doesn't even look too bad. But for this per for this demonstration, I'm gonna do the warm one. Um, immediately, I can tell it's way too yellow. So I'm gonna come to the temperature slider and bring out a bit of warmth. And then also make sure to come to the key tab and mess around with how much of the LUT you want to affect your image. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with how that looks so far. I feel like the warmth really suits the yellow color of the car. I'm gonna leave that clip as is. And once again, if you wanna see how I do this, I just dice it up until I've got a section of footage that I like. Mess around with the stabilization. I need to work on my ninja walk a bit. As you can see, there's a very slight up and down movement, but this is pretty solid. With all that being said, I really hope you found some value out of this video and it helps you out on your color grading journey. 
This tutorial really only scratches the surface of what you can do within DaVinci as it's quite an in-depth software and I'm pretty sure film studios use it for movies which tells you all you need to know like when just making videos for Instagram and YouTube. This is the first long form video I'm going to be uploading to YouTube so any feedback would be greatly appreciated and once again thanks so much for watching and I'll see you around.